Hello and welcome everyone. It is Wednesday. Before I get started today, we're going to start with some AOC madness. Oh man, you see that shit over the last two days? It's incredible. But I was talking to Tyler. Tyler apparently was born in 1995. I graduated high school in 1996. So when I reference things like 90210 and Tyler looks at me like, how's she talking about now? We know why. Then I took a poll of the room. I got three guys in the room with me right now and they're all youngins. Okay, somebody here is elderly, and I guess it's me. Tyler's laughing over there. We're gonna make we're gonna make an old lady joke now. Is that what's coming in? You're buying the the social distance stick, not to poke at people. I'm buying You're the using social distance stick for with. everyone in the room. From now on, I'm gonna make a request. You know how you put in a request when we start certain jobs? I need this. I'm gonna say I need a request. I only want elderly people in the room with me, so I feel youthful. Just saying. Wow, 1995. Mm-hmm. <sighs> graduated I was one year oh man Tyler I don't know what to say you're not an authority on anything if you're that young I'm just saying just I wasn't kidding. I wasn't even old enough to celebrate Y2K or to not celebrate but partake in Y2K you weren't even old enough to partake right right oh. I, I don't even remember the world was gonna end and I don't remember it people in the chat if you're willing share your age I'm curious who I'm talking to right now am I talking to some youngins am I talking to some moms some dads as we go along Share your age, if you're willing. Not, not the age you made up, by the way. Like, I could sit here and say I'm 30, but I'm not. Talk about your real age, I wanna know. I wanna know if when I make a joke about Brenda and Kelly, if somebody gets it. Because we all know it's not gonna be Tyler. All right, so you guys see that craziness that happened over the last couple of days with AOC? I'm sure you have. You know, AOC likes the drama, a little bit of a drama queen there, I know. I wake up one day and I'm looking around and my parents were visiting, so I wasn't, you know, digging into the news as much as I usually do. And I see this video pop up of AOC and I'm like, oh, what's going on here? And I see that she had gotten arrested. And I'm like, wow, she got arrested. What was she doing? Well, as it turns out, they, her and several other individuals were arrested at the, uh, outside the Supreme Court during a Roe v. Wade protest. This is what happened, okay? They say Ilan Omar, there's been a lot of questions about was she arrested, were they cut? Then it, then it became a story about not who was arrested, but were they handcuffed or not? Why, you may ask. All right, let's look at the video. Tyler, do you have that video that came up yes, that we can share with, AOC was, was, was in an interesting posture. She gets arrested and suddenly you see this. There she is. Walking away now to me, it looks like she's handcuffed, right? You're like, oh, she's handcuffed. Look at her, you know she's enjoying that. And then all of a sudden she lifts her hand like this. She wasn't handcuffed. Also, let's replay that for a second. You mind going back and replaying that clip? Look at the expression on her face. I wish we could zoom, I did zoom. She looks like, look at that. She's like, yeah, oh yeah. One of her proudest moments. She loved that moment. She got her photo op, somebody took a photo of that, you know, put it everywhere, blasted it everywhere. That little power, so I don't don't know, what what was the deal, people at home? What was she doing there? Was she trying to, you know you were gonna find out that she wasn't cuffed because she then went like this. So what was that about? Now you may ask, why was she arrested? Protesting is, you know, all right. Well, she was arrested for blocking traffic. Apparently, and that happens. Apparently, they told her to move and other people to move several, several times. They got several, several warnings they didn't abide by. And so they got arrested. She's going to wear that like a badge of honor. And she is one for the dramatic. Do you remember that? I didn't put this image in the, in the lineup for you, Tyler, today. But I don't know if you remember that time she went to the wall. Do you remember? Cried. Cried and was just like. <sighs> but you could just feel that it was like, everyone, you guys, everyone got your cameras? Okay. And then it was like end scene. You just feel it. Sometimes you see in her videos, I went to a video yesterday because I was looking at some of her content. If you get that photo, you can feel free to pull it up whenever. We'll show people what I'm talking about at the border. But I looked at some of her video. Look at this. Look, just kneeling, just the state of exasperation. Really? AOC, you're that worried about what's going on? You're that worried about what's going on? Then why, why don't you advocate for doing something about it? Why don't you advocate for doing something about it? Silence. No, she just wants to go out there and do the dramatics. You go to videos of her sometimes on, she's got her Instagram, very large following, 
respect because she came out. She, she, you know, she says these crazy things. She's an attractive woman. That does, listen, it's a media space. It counts. She comes out. She says all this stuff, and she has a huge following now. But she does these videos. One video was like, "I don't even know why I'm here. I just can't. I can't even tell you why I'm here today with all of you." It was very. Maybe she's looking for an acting gig. I don't know. She was on the cover of Time magazine. She, you know, Hollywood loves her. Who knows what these political figures intend to do in the future? I can tell you this: she's going to make a lot of money. She is going to make a shit ton of money doing something. I don't know whether she's going to go into Hollywood. She's going to have a talk show. She's going to have a fancy contributorship where you know your average contributor on cable news makes a hundred grand a year. She's not going to be making a hundred grand a year. She's going to make a lot more than that. I don't know what it's going to be, but something's going to happen for this one. And then you know what she's going to do. Everyone, she's gonna be really rich one day, really, really rich, and she's gonna be lecturing everyone about how socialism is the answer, right? Because that's what they do. That's what socialists, that's what Marxists do. There's always an elite, remember that. Remember that. There's always an elite. They're always gonna have the good stuff. They're always gonna have the amazing healthcare people at the top. They're always gonna get it. And then they're gonna lecture you about why you're not gonna get it in the dangerous system, the mean, nasty system of capitalism. But socialism's great. Everyone's in poverty except the people at the elite. We know how this works, right? So these are politicians for you. It's a bunch of nonsense. I was going to read you from a little bit of this article. Oh, actually, this is good. I have to go back to this about uh, the Daily Mail. We started with that on AOC. She had told NBC News Meet the Press. This is buried in the article. This is what she said about the Supreme Court decision, talking about Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court has dramatically overreached its authority. We had two conservative senators in the United States Senate. Then she cites Senator Manchin and Senator Collins. Senator Manchin's a Democrat. Senator Collins is one of the most liberal Republicans in the Senate. Conservatives are always like cringing when Collins votes. So that goes to show you that's conservative from AOC's perspective came out with a very explosive allegation that several Supreme Court justices misled them during their confirmation hearings. Then she says there must be consequences for such a deeply destabilizing action and a hostile takeover of our democratic institutions. Meantime, all they did was return the issue of abortion to the states. You would think what they did, you would think they outlawed it. You would think they were gonna jail people. You would think the Supreme Court overstepped its bounds. It didn't. This is what I'm talking about though, the flair for the dramatic, the talking points, the nonsense. This is catered to media, you know that. And that's what this was all about, what we just saw this video. It's all like, I'm one of the people, I'm a woman of the people, I'm here, I'm with you, take my picture. And if you put me on Time Magazine, I'm gonna say I don't wanna do it, but I will do it and I won't enjoy any of it. Next. Okay. Real quick, two two things. Yeah. She's gonna get rich off her store. Have you seen her online store? No. (laughs) What's in the store? Okay, bring. Tax the rich, 58 bucks for a sweater. Green New Deal dad what? hat, $28. I would love to know what it's made of. Is that some type of like exquisite organic cotton? I, I need, why is that 58 bucks? It's $24 for a poster, 27 the for a rich month. shirt. Do you see how the tone deafness though? Oh yeah. People can't afford to put gas in their car. You, car, you gotta, if you can afford to buy a $58 shirt that says tax the rich, you're making some cash, right? Think about it, you at home struggling to put food on the table. I've been in that position. I'm not speaking just to you. I know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck, be struggling. I wasn't buying any shirts for $58 that said tax the rich. Do you see what I'm talking about? Also, capitalism. She loves capitalism when it comes to her store. Oh, yeah. Ah, listen, we love socialism except when it involves my store. Then become a capitalist and the idea is to get me rich. And then once I'm rich and I'm a member of the elite, we can all have socialism for the common folk. That's AOC. Don't bite it, don't take the bait. I always say don't take the bait. Don't bite it means like, you know what, I say that, people don't know what I mean, but you know what? You know when you put a little something out for a dog and they're like, right away, don't be the dog. Think before you bite, just saying. But you wanna know my favorite part of that story? Every AOC got all the headlines, right? But did you see what Ilhan Omar did? Il, Ilhan Omar, her, her yeah. best friend. Today I was arrested while participating in a civil disobedience action, da 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 da. Have you seen the video? Of her? Watch this. Yeah. Let's see if they can pull it up. This is Ilhan Omar. Okay, there's AOC. Yeah. With a cop, right? And here comes Ilhan, hands behind her back, walking by herself. (laughs) By herself, (laughs) following in pure disobedience. She's like, what about me? She's like, what about me? We talked about this beforehand. (laughs) 
We talked about this and it was going to be both of us in the photo. <laughs> they were supposed to take a photo of both of us. You stole my thunder again. I wonder if there was a fight. You know what else people pointed out, which was interesting? I have no idea. I thought about this. Everyone was like, it was like 90 plus degrees. Why are they wearing coats? Right. Somebody said, does she have right. something under there? She's hot. What's going on there? I don't know. Listen, I don't know if she had something, a sign or something. I don't know what was going on there, but I don't know about you in 90 degree heat. I don't wear a winter jacket. Okay. All right. I got to get to some more crazy Democrats. Thank you for that, Tyler. I hadn't seen that part of the video. <laughs> that's, that's my, Come on, man. good disobedience. She's like, don't hey. forget about me. Yeah. What about me? Took the photo without her. Ramp AOC's always stealing her thunder in one way or another. So I see this story come out. Crazy Democrats. Man, you guys are just getting nuts. I don't know what else to say about it. What other word to use? I see this. RNC Research put it up. And it says, Biden Assistant Secretary for Health, Rachel Levine. That's, remember, the first openly trans official uh, that's been confirmed by the Senate. We need to empower kids to go on puberty blockers and get sex reassignment surgery. Now, I said to myself, she, she couldn't have said that, right? No, come on. So I played a little bit of it. And that is exactly what gets it. Tyler, can we play a little bit of it? People need to hear it because, you know, you'll think I'm making this stuff up. Let's play it. So we really want to, 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 to base our treatment and, uh, and to uh, affirm and to uh, support and empower these youth not to limit their participation in activities and sports and even uh, uh, limit their ability to get gender affirmation treatment in their state. OK, so gender affirmation, so we really treatment, that's what that is. That winds up being hormone therapy. It winds up being things like puberty blockers. And in some cases, it winds up being surgery for children. That's what's being advocated. So I, I write something above it. And I said, run on this, Democrats. I dare you. And it went. People liked it. There were a lot of people that shared that. Listen, I invite you, Democrats. I am, this is an open invitation, really. If you believe in this stuff and you claim that you do, you know, you have someone, a very high ranking official out there saying as such, if you believe this, then stand by it. Make this part of the platform this time around. I want to see what happens. Let's try it for the midterms. We can try it for the midterms. You can test it out. If it doesn't go well, then we'll see what happens for the next presidential election. So there's two problems here, right? We have one problem is that Democrats are tone deaf to what's really happening. And we talked about this, right? Priority issues, inflation, the economy, whether or not you have a job, whether or not you can put food on the table. People are worried about that and they're talking about this, right? So that's problem number one. Problem number two is how unbelievably extreme this is and the tone deafness that they don't realize that people out there, they're not, they're not supporting this stuff when it comes to kids. They have reservations, right? Remember, what you would consider for an adult, many people when it comes to an adult say, I don't care what you do. It's your life. You're a grown person. You want to do X, Y, and Z. You may regret it. Here's the stats on it. Do what you want. I don't care. It's a very different conversation when it comes to small children. When it comes to kids who are growing, kids who are learning about themselves, kids who don't yet know, don't yet understand, kids that are being brainwashed, that is a very, very different conversation. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, even people in the trans community, people in the trans community will have hesitation when it comes to children and say, that's a little bit different. I, I don't know how I feel about that just yet. So if this is where you're going, <laughs> oh, have fun. Republicans are going to be waiting to cut those. Ads. In fact, you know what? Start cutting the ads now, guys. RNC Research just did. They cut this up. They're trying to say this is your 2022 Democrat Party. That's what they're saying. This is it. You ready? So that the people in the middle, the independents, the people who may lean Democrat, but they're more of like an old style Joe Biden Democrat, look at this and they're like, oh, what's going on here? No, I, I'm not. No, thanks. OK. I want to see how loud they get with this stuff. You should every single person. Now, if we had a, an honest media, this would happen. Every single member of the media who claims to be a journalist, not the journalist, the journalist should ask, ask them, ask Joe Biden, ask Kamala Harris. We know we'll get the oh, the stars, the sun, the moon. <laughs> you know, you know, that's coming. But ask her, say, how do you feel about this issue? Do you feel do you believe in gender reassignment surgery for children? Let her try to figure out. Can you imagine the answer that Kamala would give on that? She's in outer space. She's not going to know what to say. <laughs> Something like that, right? With a couple of cackles in there. All right. So this is crazy, right? 
I happen to notice a, a corresponding article on this issue. And I talk about the gender issue a lot. This is a hot issue and it's an important issue. This involves the next generation. And this involves if they can own, remember this, if Democrats and these woke maniacs can own language and facts cease to exist, then where, do, where are we? What are we just floating around in space? Like nothing means anything anymore. Everything is, okay, well look, nothing does. It's starting to get to that point. Post-millennial, the dictionary definition of female now includes males who identify as opposite sex. This is not a joke. This is a revision in the dictionary. Okay, and it goes in to describe it. The dictionary definition of female has been changed by Merriam Webster. Merriam Webster, okay, to appease trans activists, once defined as adult human female, the term now has a lengthy definition, including having a gender identity that is the opposite of male. If you go there, see, it's been highlighted. Okay, so now, do you see what's happening? Do you get it yet? They're now modifying language, language. Okay, if words cease to have meaning, right? Where are you as a society? Words cease to have meaning. Biology, just basic facts seem to have meaning. How can you argue for this or for that? Everything is now subjective. Everything. And do you see, by the way, how these Merriam Webster, all they're all they're all in on the game? They're all in on the game, right? They modified this. They probably got pressure. Somebody looked here some woke person. I don't have my glasses today. I wish I had my little spectacles. Somebody was like, professor and an, like, I, this is bigoted. This is very bigoted. They scrolled down and they were like, this needs to be modified. They complained and look, there it is. So this is what I'm asking you people. Are you, is this the world you want to live in? Do you want to live in a world where you're having a conversation with a bunch of, bunch of people and you use the word man and that's like, oh, oh whoa, whoa, I don't invite her next time. Are you ready for this level of batshit crazy in your life? I'm asking because if you're not, you better speak up. You better speak up and you better get loud and you better do it. If you don't want to do it for yourself, you better do it for your kids because let me tell you, my, I have a two and a half year old. I'm raising a son at a time when Men are under the attack oftentimes. There's a lot going on when it comes to the feminist movement of hatred against men and accuse men of this without question and men are this and men are that. And there's a lot of that going on. And I'm also raising him in a time when this woke nonsense makes facts and words cease to matter. I don't want him to grow up in a crazy society. I don't. I want sanity and logic to prevail. Okay? So think about it. And if you're thinking about it, do something about it. Speak up. On that topic, I saw a great article. We talk about the woke culture. We talk about all, I was really, um, I was waiting for this too, because we had a conversation on this show about the military. And remember that when we showed that ridiculous training video for sailors, it looked like a children's video. They were like talking like, like sailors were little kids. Like, it, oh yeah, you know, I mean, it was like blues clues. Right. You remember that? It had like colorful, all that. OK. And we talked about how that was dangerous, how you had the military now sitting at home and getting these woke videos. Don't forget to subscribe. By the way, every time I see that cute graphic, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm saying. If you want to support this fight against the crazy, you got to subscribe. you got to do your part. I see this article in the New York Post. This is no time for our military to go woke. And then I see this. So vets like me are fighting back. This is is crucial. It's crucial. Vets need to speak up against this stuff in the same way that I say, women, if you don't like your trophies being taken away from you, you need to speak up. You need to open your mouth. It's not going to change unless you speak up. So this veteran is a male and writes in and says, talks about, you know, had joined the army in 2011, talks about the training that he received, goes into detail, ROTC, infantry officer school, airborne and ranger school, focuses on the ideals that were talked about, duty, courage, discipline, and self, uh, selflessness, and then goes in to talk about some of the threats that we're facing, right? Talks about Russia, China, North Korea, digs in a little on Iran, just mentions like, hey, this is not a time to be asleep. This is not a time when you want your military watching dumb woke videos geared toward, I don't know what, the feeble-minded, it seems. That's not what you want. He has a couple of lines in this that are fantastic, and I'm going to read them. Today, military officials talk so much about climate change, domestic extremism, and systemic racism that you'd think our enemies are at home. 
not abroad. Well, exactly. What is this about? I thought the primary goal of the military was to learn how to fight. What's going on here? This guy's saying to himself, what, what did I spend all that time training for? For this embarrassment to be rolled out? Another good line. Army recruitment ads seem aimed more at attracting social justice warriors than actual warriors. That is perfectly, perfectly, perfectly said. The Army, the Navy, the Marines. You are not supposed to be about social justice. Your primary goal, you are supposed to be trained so that when tragedy strikes, right, an opponent strikes, you get sent out and you know what to do. You've got your mind in the right place. You've got your body, your physicality in the right place, and you're ready to go. You're not supposed to be like an activist. You want to be an activist? Become an activist. Don't enter the army. Don't sign up and say, oh, I want to be an activist. I really believe in woke causes, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join the military. You're putting people in danger because you're not prioritizing what should be the, the goal that is prioritized for men and women in the military. I know I just said men and women. Everybody's like, wow, what bad words. This is confusing. Also imagine for a second that you served in the military like this guy. You, you risked your life. Maybe you came to an inch of your own death, right? You made sacrifices. You left your family. You felt lonely. Maybe you suffer from some type of post-traumatic stress, which happens. It's a very, very difficult thing to do to join the military, it's an admirable thing. It's a courageous thing. It's very challenging for some. For all, it would, be, it would be far too challenging for me. Not everybody can do it. You need a certain caliber of character and strength to do it. These people went and did that, and now they got to come home and be like, what, why did I even bother? If you were just going to destroy, this is how you destroy the military. You destroy the military, you're in trouble. So I ask again, is the destruction intentional? The vets may think so. They may say, if you want to, they know, they know, they know that if their morale is down, if they feel like they're not there for the right reasons, if they're, they're not being pumped up and instead they're talking about all this garbage, they know what happens when those people who've been deflated have to go into war. They're trying to warn you. They're trying to warn you, but they're also trying to warn the people at the top. And if the people at the top are trying to actively destroy a country, Maybe they receive that message and they're like, oh, good, what we're doing is working. I'm just saying, not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but I'm just saying. So I appreciate that, that a vet stepped out like that. It's not easy to, to write those articles, right? And it's hard. You go through the emotional turmoil of like, you know, what did I go through and why? And this is, you know, it's hard. You got a lot of pride in the military if you served. Now you've got to see it turn into some type of ridiculous nonsense that maybe HBO will pick up and make a, a movie about. Oh, uh -huh. It's not about movies, it's about fighting. All right. On the topic of woke, you know, because it gets dumb, I need to show you what's happening because people say, well, why? I had somebody write me the other day and say, you know, I was a teacher for many years and I didn't see any of this. Well, I was a teacher for many years and I saw it all starting and that was many years ago. The seed was planted. This stuff is happening. This woke madness is, is now injected and inserted into everything. Take a look at this, MSN, woke dance school, drops ballet. This is not a joke, drops ballet, drops ballet from auditions as it is white and elitist. Can you imagine this? Now ballet is a problem. So I, I, I read down, it's the Northern School of Contemporary Dance. It aims to be a progressive institution. We know what that means, right? Nine out of 10 times somebody calls themselves progressive, it's regressive. It's just a fancy word. It's like, oh, I'm progressive, really? Hmm. Maybe it's progressive for people to have no money, policies that make them broke, policies that remove facts from the equation. Yeah, progressive. It's dumb. A lot of times it's dumb. The dumb hurts. I'm not going to lie. They reviewed elitist art forms okay, as part of a diversity drive that has seen the introduction of new policies relating to gender and race. It's an effort to decolonize the curriculum. I'm not making this up, guys. I'm telling you what's happening. Now, I was thinking to myself, well, what is it about ballet? Well, they explain. It's a very specific form that's built around particular white European ideas and body shapes, and body shapes that are often alienating to young people who do, do not fit that aesthetic ideal. So ballerinas, you know, typically thin, very, very thin. So now, what is this? Like, oh, if you're fat, that, oh, well, you can't insult fat people because they can't be ballerinas. And I mean, what is going on here? 
you got to be in shape to do ballet. Well, look at what they do. It's, it's, ballet is very hard work. It's very challenging. It's not easy. They put in blood, sweat, and tears. So now, well, you're going to insult people that are out of shape and fat. So we can, I mean, is this real? It is. It gets better. Then I see it's an issue of vocabulary. I said, what? What's going on here with the crazies? The everyday use of men and women, not kidding, or girls and boys in dance classes is a problem to them. The split of roles along gender lines with female dancers tending toward point work and men customarily performing leaps and lifts has also been cited as an issue. Do you see what I'm saying, though? If you remove the words male and female, they don't have any meaning. Now, do you see the problems that arise now? Well, now, oh, anything that uses the word male and female, that must be bigoted. What are we going to just remove that from everything? They already tried doing that. Remember in the toy stores, boys and girls. It's, it's like everything is a problem. I go onto websites now when I uh, buy clothes for the baby. And you know how sometimes on those websites, it'll say like, you can check boxes. It'll say like for your age. And then it'll say like for boys or for girls. I, the sites that still have that, I'm like, man, they must be getting some hate mail. They must be getting some hate mail, you know? And, and an increasing number of, of sites don't have them because people probably complain and say, well, I want gender neutral terminology. You know, this is getting nuts, guys. I'm sorry. This is getting really nuts and it's getting really scary and you better open your, up your mouth. What's next? We, maybe you don't care about ballet, right? Maybe you're sitting listening to this. Well, I don't care about ballet. Well, do you care about the military? What do you care about? Because that's going to be next on the chopping block. Nothing is exempt. Nothing, that's what I'm trying to tell you is that I bring these stories and it's like ballet, maybe you don't care. Maybe you don't care about ballet or the military. You care about something. They're coming for that thing next because that's going to be, it's not woke enough. It's got to be obliterated. You see what they do with the monuments and the history's got to be erased and certain books aren't good. You can't read those anymore. And certain movies are bad because there was slavery at the time, even though that was a reflection of what was happening at the time. Good, bad, or indifferent, things happened in history. Slavery was a bad thing, but it was real. It happened. It's part of our history. You can't talk about it now. This is nuts. This is nuts. Speaking of nuts, uh, do you remember that video we covered the other day? And if you missed the show, you can always go back, you know. That's the good thing about YouTube. You go back, click, and you watch. We covered a video from Andrew Tate. Y'all know Andrew Tate, kickboxer. He's out there. He's in the manosphere. I love that, the manosphere. I do think it's a creative term. I'm not going to lie. Tyler's like, I don't know about it. The manosphere. He's in the manosphere. And he uh, did a video that I strongly disagreed with about self-defense, saying essentially, you know, self-defense with women, don't even bother. You just need to scream and run. You know, self-defense is not for women. Okay. I come across this, and there are many of these. Ladies, if you're listening, there are many of these stories. They happen, sadly, far too often. This one caught my eye in the New York Post. Connecticut man pulls gun on women who didn't thank him for holding a door, cops say. This is not a joke. If you scroll down, it says... Um, a Connecticut man pulled a gun on two women, blah, blah, blah. Murray allegedly whipped out a pistol during the encounter, then fled. He was picked up by officers nearby. A witness reported that the suspect was upset that two women did not say thank you to him for holding the door open. So this, ha this is an unfortunate reality. This stuff happens. It happens a lot to women. It's terrifying. And often you're at a disadvantage size-wise when it happens. So here's my message again, I'm going to say. This is just me showing you, hey, people who say self-defense isn't for women, you're wrong. And your, your message is dangerous. This shit happens. Be prepared. Get trained. Get armed. Go through the proper protocol. Be a law-abiding citizen. Get armed. Figure that out. If you, hopefully you live in a state where that's possible, although it's increasingly becoming impossible in certain states or very, very challenging. Get fit. Be ready. Have your eyes open. That's another thing. You ever noticed? One thing I noticed the other day that's extremely concerning to me is that because of all the phones and all the tech, people live like this, right? And they don't only live. It's all, it's all this. You ever see the people that walk with the phones like this and they bump into stuff and then they, they trip, they're on the floor and then it's like, oh, and they're just like, okay. This is kind of reminds me of my grandma used to tell me, my grandma lived till 102. She was, oh man, she would have been a good shoot the shit guest. She would have been like, you're a man. Don't tell me you're, it would have been good Italian. Like, oh man, you guys would have loved her. Took no shit. She would have been like, I'm not dealing with any of these maniacs. She used to tell me, don't go running with headphones on. Cause I used to have my little Walkman. She used to be like, don't do that. She was right. 
You're not prepared for what's going on. Even if you're not on a road where there's cars, you're not prepared. Even I used to keep it low. That was dumb. Still, you know, people do dumb stuff when they're young. We all did it, right? Stop. Get off the phone, man. Because stuff's going on. People are, people are enraged. And always remember, we live in a society now where people are struggling, right? When you see poverty on the rise, when you see frustration on the rise, when, you, when people don't have money, when people, you know, people lose their jobs, when you see cities falling apart, this is just, this is sowing the seed for trouble for troubled people to just be looking to get their frustrations out, right? Dangerous people. This is dangerous stuff. Women, be prepared. I'm not saying men that you shouldn't be prepared too. You should. I'm just addressing the idea that this does happen to women a lot and oftentimes they're not prepared and it's a problem. Go to call the cops. They're not always going to be there right away. Maybe in that area, the, the police got defunded and they don't show up for 20 minutes. Hmm, good luck to you. And go figure. The guy was carrying... <gasps> An illegal gun. An illegal gun. An illegal gun, which means that no amount of gun control for all the brainiacs out there would have gotten to the meat of that matter because he got his gun illegally because <gasps> criminals don't obey laws. Tyler, I was told, I was told, really? by, I was told by AOC right before she got cuffed that criminals obey laws and that's why gun control works. Weren't you told that? I was lied to. AOC needs to make a video about that for me and she can just not understand why she's there and just, you gotta go watch those videos. I can't, I, I was mesmerized. I was like, why is she doing a video if she's not sure why she's there? What's going on? And all the people, you gotta see though, people tuning in. I'm telling you, man, she's got a following. That should make you uncomfortable. Did you see the one where she did about her garbage disposal? I'm Fascinated. Been, I must have missed that one. Fascinated by a garbage disposal. Apparently she had never had one until she was 27. Just blew her mind. You got to, it's a couple years oh, old. Oh, I'm going to have to go watch back. It. You know it's, what? We might, have good. To, we might have to do a, a live reacts to that one. We should take some of her videos, honestly. Oftentimes, politically, she's, I would love to sit down with her. She would not come here. I can tell you that straight up. I would love to sit down with her because she meanders. And it's, I mean, the thing about Democrat talking points is that they're not grounded in reality. They're often grounded in the land of make believe. So facts very quickly take that stuff down, right? Two things take it down facts and common sense. Okay, that's why a lot of times liberals don't like to come and sit with conservatives because we bring facts and common sense. And then it's like, but it's not fair, but it's not just, but it's not, it's the spread the wealth. That's what it turns out as, you know, you're just sitting here like, oh man, I, it's five minutes of my life. I'm never going to get back. You know, we, we joke, but it's, it's sad. We talked about this yesterday on Pat's podcast. American politics, politics today is a popularity contest. That's why I'm afraid yeah. of like Gavin Newsom in 2024 because his policies suck. Okay, look at New York. Uh, half a million people voted for Kathy Hochul mm -hmm. in, the, in the gubernatorial race. AOC could legitimately be. Oh, yes. Today. She could. You saw how Bill de Blasio, by the way, you saw he dropped out of mm -hmm. that. Okay, so Bill de, Bill de Blasio, but again, that, that comes to your point. Mm -hmm. He's unlikable. Yeah. He's an unlike across the board. Democrats can't stand him. AOC, very, but Gavin Newsom, I don't find likable either. I don't know how the left feels about him though. But yeah, you're right. It is a popularity contest. And that's why I always say, I remember sitting on a panel with somebody um, who now works for CNN a while back. And they were like, I want my politicians to be boring. And I was like, well, good for you. I don't because those people don't get elected. It's, it's just, look at Trump. Love him or hate him. Trump was a charismatic guy. He was a charismatic guy that he didn't get into the White House because he had political experience. He didn't get into the White House because he was a policy wonk. He got into the White House because he people felt like, oh, he's one of us. He talks like one of us. He gets it. He's got the humor. He's not afraid to say shit. He's got this, you know, crazy stuff going on on Twitter. I like this guy. He just seems real. He seems raw. Mm -hmm. That was it. End of story. Even well, conservatives weren't asking. I was asked like, well, hey, uh, did you did you see that video about him where he like endorsed universal health care. They were like, no, 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 that's not him. He's cool. He's, he's a cool guy. I'm just saying it's not, it's, it is Obama. Cool guy was labeled. Oh, he, we want to have a beer with him. It's true. So AOC. Yes. When I say, I don't know if she wants that, but I will tell you, she's going to have a lot of potential that one. She's going to be able to have her pick of the litter. Does she want to go into politics further? Does she want to climb that ladder or does she want to become a Hollywood megastar? There's going to be a lot of options there. Because remember, if you're a conservative and you're opinionated and you're on point, there's certain realms that just won't deal with you, right? Hollywood's not going to deal with me. They don't want any interest in me. They don't want to elevate this common sense I'm speaking right now. You can't have that. But she's on the right side for them of all these issues. And by that, I mean the left side. She's going to have a lot of options. So you better watch out.
She's, she, and she's young. She's 32 now. She's so young. she can't run in 24. Right. But she could run in 2028. 20, yeah. 2032. I don't know if she wants to do that. But you know what? You run for president. Even if you don't have aspirations to be president. You still run you for run. president. You oh, run. Pu- Imagine the publicity she would get. Forget it. It would be through the roof, man. It would be through the roof. Of course, there'd be a ton of videos of her saying dumb shit. So people would be like, oh, I don't know about that. She might not win. But that would be, I mean... She's got almost a million followers, I think, on Twitter and Instagram is like through the roof. She's and got more than that, does she? Oh, does she? Not, uh, I yeah. don't know. She's got a ton. I think it's like 20 million or something. Oh, maybe that's her congressional account. That I mean, her. she, she has a couple of accounts actually hey. on, on uh, Twitter. 13.2 million on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter? 13.2. She has another account that's got like 800,000 or something, I think. Um, or maybe it wasn't her. I don't know. But yeah, yeah there you go. It's like when you hear, there you go. Uh, what was it? One of the Paul brothers was like, yeah, I'm going to run for president. It's, it's, you know, American politics is in a sad state nowadays. It's in a very yep. sad state. In many ways. Not just because it's a popularity contest, but because then you have the policy people that aren't interested in a popularity contest, like the Mitch McConnells that are completely useless. Mm-hmm. So it's like useless politicians, politicians that are indebted to lobbyists. Then you got the AOCs that it's just like, what cover am I going to be on next? I'm not, listen, I'm not saying that she's only there for that reason. And I'm not saying she doesn't believe what she says. I'm saying that what she says is batshit crazy. I'm not saying she doesn't believe it. I'm just saying it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not, a, it's not a path to success for anybody, except for maybe the elites that will exist as elites always, as I was saying. All right, we're gonna move to some um, dating and relationships now. Listen, you guys have been loving these conversations about dating and relationships. I've been loving the conversations. So all the valuetainment people out there, by the way, uh, on Instagram, who have getting, been getting fired up. I do see some of the comments. I, I don't sit and read every one, but I do see some of them and I love that. Listen, challenge me. I love the, the back and forth. The goal here is to create discussion. If you're, if you're you know, getting heated or you're exchanging your ideas or you're liking or disliking, or going, that's the whole point, right? What, what the hell is the point of doing any of this if people aren't talking and conversing about it? So I wanna go to our friend first. I say friend with reservations but our friend Andrew Tate um, I think this is an important video and, and by the way I'm gonna show you a series we're gonna we're gonna tackle them one by one but there there is a message here that I want you to get at the end of this no matter where you stand male female like whatever you love him you hate him you're in the manosphere you're a feminist there's a message here that we're gonna come to at the end so pay attention to when we go to each one see if you can figure out where I'm going with this okay I can do whatever I want. Let's go to it, Andrew Tate. Let's see what we got. What would you do if I was going on girls' holidays every other month? I'd have to shut that down. I think it's disrespectful. Do you go on a lot of holidays? I can do whatever I want. You're with me, you don't want to. We go on holidays together, we go places together. When I have to go places with just the boys, you stay home. It could just be like women just go on holiday to have fun. And And men will try and sleep with you. So. So Does that I mean d- the women are? Correct. This, this is what I'm saying. You agree. No, no, agree. No, agree. It's not warped reality. It's not warped reality. Yes, you do. We agree. Yes, you do. Okay. We agree. Okay. No, you're not moving on to the next okay. question. Yes, we are moving no, on. Question. Moving no, on. we agree. Okay. We agree. You're right. They're going to try, and you're not going to let them. I agree. If I walk out to the car park, it doesn't matter how good the locks are on my car. If someone's trying to break into my car, am I going to let them keep trying? No. No. It's mm-hmm. disrespectful. It's mine, and no one comes near it because it's mine. No one's going to try and steal it. For me to I'll put it in a place where people are going to try and steal it is nothing less than irresponsible. My female is taken care okay. of and has a fantastic life. So that's good. She does not need so to- you see he's, he's in this interview. Now, the, did you catch that moment, by the way? She, that's her. She's interviewing him. She, she's, she, he's supposed to be in the hot seat. He's not in the hot seat. She's in the hot seat. You see how he flipped that power dynamic real quick? You got to know that if you're interviewing someone. When they say, no, 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 you don't get to ask another question. <laughs> that's not going to happen here. Let's just say that. No, no. I'm going to ask what I want and give it a second. So she relinquished that. I actually saw a little bit of a shrink in her. You can't shrink when you're interviewing somebody like that. He's got a lot of energy. He's a powerhouse. He's got strong opinions. He's not afraid to sit down with people. You can't be afraid to take that on. I sensed a little bit of like, "Mm." no, you can't sit back for a second. You gotta sit tight. Just some advice. So this is interesting to me. Here's my bottom line first. You gotta be able to trust somebody that you're with. 
You have to be able to trust the person that you're dating. Men, women, you are not going to be able to have a body cam on someone 24 hours a day. You're not going to be with them 24 hours a day. You're not going to want to have that responsibility of, of being in their phone all the time or, or having an eye on their social media. Hopefully you're not you know, hiring a private detective to follow them around when they're going to the grocery store. You don't want to live like that. So what I'm saying to you is if you feel the way he feels about your partner, you don't trust them. You don't trust them. You need to know that out of the gate and say, listen, own it. Don't make it like, oh, it's about other guys or oh, no, you don't trust your partner. You don't, you don't. There's something wrong there. Maybe that person did you wrong in the past. Maybe somebody else did you wrong in the past and now you've got your eyes, your tentacles out. Something happened along the way, either to you or around, maybe something happened to your best friend. You witnessed something, you're like, oh shit, I'm never letting that happen to me. Maybe your girl or your guy is engaging in some stuff on social media that you've caught and you've had to say, stop doing that. Something's going on there, right? I will say that holidays with all the girls every other month is a bit much. What are you doing going on holiday every other? You got time for that? You got time for that? That's a bit much. Now, had he said in this conversation, I don't like the girls' holidays, I don't like the guys' holidays. Listen, we're a couple, like we're doing shit together. I don't like this, like all this, like boys going away, doing, I, he would have had my ear. And I'll tell you why, because I'm gonna be honest with you, I've seen a lot of shit go down. When all the girls go out, it's, it's not always cute. There's stuff that goes on that shouldn't go on sometimes. I've been to a few bachelor parties, a few bachelorette parties, I should say. I went to a bachelor party actually two once. I went to a few bachelorette parties and sometimes I was like, hmm, this isn't appropriate. You're getting married tomorrow, you're doing that. Or there was another person there who was married and I was like, oh, that's not appropriate. I think I've been to two in my life because I don't like them. It's not my thing, I didn't have one. I don't, I'm not into it. I'm not into like, oh, I'm getting married, so let me go out and do all as much inappropriate shit as I can. Let me have my penis lollipop, and let me like, let me do all that. Let's go like grind on a stripper. No, listen, honey, if you still need to be doing that, you should probably postpone that wedding for another year or two. You need to get some more stuff. Something's going on with you that you need to get out. That one night's not gonna be sufficient. Something's going on. So I'm not into that. I'm not into the bachelor parties where the guys go out, the strip club, that, that's just not my thing. Okay, so if he had said that, I would have been like, hmm. I would have been like, well, maybe he's, maybe he's got a point there. He doesn't, something's going on here. It's the double standard, Andrew Tate. That's what's getting me, the double standard. You make some valid points here. You make some valid points here about what goes on in these spaces when women hang out and all men hang out. You, you, I, I know, it's the double standard. And what happens is when men come off like this, it makes me feel like there's an insecure. Why are you insecure? Because here's the thing, if you have, say you're going out with a girl and you think she's hot, you know, you, you think she's really got her shit together, you think she's fine, you're all about her, and you know that other guys are looking at her. If you trust your girl, you're gonna be like, well, great. All those other guys are gonna be like, well, he's going out with a really hot girl. She's not mine, I wish she was mine, end of story. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll even wanna try to make something happen with your girl, right? Maybe on the sneak, they're gonna send her a text message, or maybe when you're not looking at the bar, they're gonna go a wink and a smile. But if you're comfortable with your girl, all that's just like, oh yeah, you can try all you want, you're not gonna get my woman. Don't compare women to cars, okay? Don't you, you will, somebody like this has arguments to make where I'll find myself being like, well, I disagree there, but I agree that the second you go and you say, car, woman, oh, here's how they're the same. It's my property, it's my belonging. That's where you're gonna lose people. You're gonna even lose people who might be inclined to, to agree with you on some things. A woman is not a car, a woman is not property, a woman is her own person. That's a person, right? You should demand respect from that person. You should give respect to that person. It's not a car, it's not property. Okay, you can't talk about somebody like their property and expect them to respect you in return. What you're gonna wind up getting, if you, if you continue like this, what you'll wind up getting are girls that are okay with being called property and they're not gonna give you respect. If they're not getting respect, they're not giving respect. I'm telling you, somewhere along the line, you're gonna find out something's going on that you're not getting the respect you deserve because they're not getting the respect they deserve. It's mutual in every situation. When one party's not giving it, the other party stops giving it. All right. No separate sets of rules, I wrote in big letters. No separate sets of rules. That's all, why is that hard? Why is that hard? Okay, I got more. 
I got more. This one is amazing. Tyler, please. Oh, this one is amazing. Now, ladies, this is an example. I saw this. Let's just play it. You know what? This one, Fresh Fit. They have some great content. I'm not going to lie. It should be the right part here. Let's make sure. Okay, let's make sure. Thing is that a woman is valuable whether she wants to be covered or showing off her body. Like, I think that we live in like a patriarchal society to where like (sighs) they're determining, you know, what's valuable and not. But like as women, we need to like, you know, reclaim our sexuality. And okay, we, stop. Like, I can't. Valuable. I was just like. Rawr, rawr. See how she vomited all the words out. Patriarchy. And it was more like patriarchy and like women and like empowerment. And it's only fans is okay and she says that later too like if you want to have an only fan oh gloria steinem you know who that is yeah the feminist i say this because really these people didn't empower women they created this right this is like a it's just like talking points are just like she's sweating them out on set she didn't know what to say so she was just like all these words and i'm sure fresh and fit are sitting there laughing their asses off because this shit is funny it is not empowering It is not empowering to be half naked. I don't know how many times I got to say it. It is not empowering. Stop quoting the patriarchy. Stop. The patriarchy has nothing to do with why you decide in 2022 to get up on a Saturday and go shopping for an outfit for Saturday night at the club and you decide you're going to look like a prostitute. Okay, that's not the patriarchy, honey. That's you making that decision to put the goods out there and advertise yourself as that. And you know what happens with women like this? These women say this. They say, oh, patriarchy, empowerment. And and they ultimately say, well, they want to be respected. They want to be respected. Okay. And then they go out, they buy like a slutty outfit. They get all done up. They put everything out there, right? They let some guy approach them who's looking at them like, guy's looking at you and saying, well, she was looking for something real. She wouldn't be here at the club behaving like that. You know, drinking one hand, sloppy, like all boobs hanging out. You know, she wouldn't be doing that. So she's obviously looking for what I'm looking for. That guy's thinking, oh, I'm looking for something quick. He goes, he sleeps with you. He doesn't call you the next day. And then you're on the phone with your girlfriend like, I don't know why this always happens to me. I feel disrespected. I try. I got an outfit. I went to the, I'm just like doing what they do. And I don't know. I don't know. Please stop. You can't have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. You want a guy to respect you? Guys have, they can see, like, guys see all the women. Like, you look in the club, you know what's so funny? When I was in, the first club I went to, really, when I was in college. First club, I I never went to a club in high school. I was a nerd. I, I, like, didn't have time for any of that. I went to a club in in, in, uh, college, and I went, I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. It was called Cheetah. It was in New York City. I walked in. At that time, the girls were like scantily dressed, although compared to how girls dress in clubs now, everybody looked like a goddamn nun. I'm not kidding. It was like, it was not like it is now. I walked in in jeans, boots, not not boots like you're thinking like, oh, high up the leg, regular boots and a, I'm embarrassed to say a sweater. I was wearing a sweater. I was just like, my hair was down, whatever. And what I noticed that night was interesting. Certain guys would pay attention to me. I was single at the time. Certain guys would pay attention to me and other guys didn't, didn't just were looking right past me to like some half naked girl. Guys, they know, they detect. The guys that are out there looking for a fling or a one night stand, their eyes are gonna go right to what is clearly presenting themselves as that, right? In the same way that you'll say, if a guy really meets a girl that's respecting herself and dressing like they respect themselves, and acting like they respect themselves, they're gonna say to themselves, hmm, either A, I'm not ready for a relationship, so I'm not gonna bother with this girl, or B, oh, I really like this girl, so I'm gonna treat her with respect. I'm not gonna try to smash on night one. I'm gonna ask her out. This is a girl I wanna take home to mom. There might be some future here. So don't, act, what I'm saying is, don't act like you're powerless. Like, you're just out there and you're just, no. No, if you act slutty and you get treated slutty, don't be upset about it. Stop. Take control over that situation. Instead of calling your friend that night, uh, maybe the next time you go to the club, buy something that's sexy, 
but doesn't look like a prostitute. Maybe stop throwing out the patri- Oh, the patriarch is to blame. What patriarchy right now? We live in the United States in 2022, honey. Come on. Nothing irritates me as much as this because it really, it, it, it's, it's disgraceful behavior. I don't like disgraceful behavior from women. I just don't like to see it. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to the other side of this. You see what I'm doing? I'm doing a dance here. Don't think, oh, Jed's all over the plate. No. I always have a plan. Now we're gonna go to the other side of this and we're gonna hear from a guy. Oh no, we're not, I'm sorry. We're gonna hear from, one more Tyler, we're gonna hear from a woman. Tyler, do you know what you're pulling? Oh no, no, actually it's me. Let's do this one. <laughs> no, because I have them out of order and I, I have a certain method to my madness. Okay, if my wife lets herself go after I have kids with her, then I'm out. Let's do the guy. Okay. Then we're gonna go back to a woman. Doesn't matter really, but I'm, I'm OCD. My wife lets herself go after I have kids with her, if I'm going to tell her once, if you don't get your shit together, I still want to be sexually attracted Agreed. to my wife, yeah. my spouse. But if you Even can't do that, girlfriend too, if you can't do that, I'm out. Okay, so now that's gross. See, this girl's like, I'm out. You know, she picked up him. This is gross. I'm out. Do you see what's going on here? Now, this guy says, now I understand. Listen, you, you want to be sexually attracted to somebody you're with. What I would say is you do have a right to have that conversation. I'm gonna tell you straight up. Sometimes my husband, Jeremy, I'm sorry to call you out. Jeremy, you know, is, is into fitness. He takes care of himself. We eat really well. But sometimes if he's stressed out, all of a sudden I notice a lot of ice cream going into the, into the freezer. A lot of ice cream. And I will say to him, because Jeremy tends to, you know, that little, that little ice cream tends to gravitate around the waist. You know, we joke about it all the time. The same way I get the big old booty, he gets the big old tummy. And I'll say, you don't want to get a tummy. Not because, truthfully, I... I like a little meat on a man, but I'm like, I don't, that's not healthy to carry weight there. I'll say it. I don't say if you don't do that. Or, or. It's not like that, but it's, I will bring it up and you should be able to bring it up. I know it's taboo. Guys can't say like that to women, supposedly in society, bullshit. Listen, I always tell him, if I get a little bit too much of the chunk, you tell me. Chunk's coming out. You know, he likes the chunk, so that's a whole other situation. But you should be able to talk to your partner, especially because obesity and things like that are related to health. And if you love that partner and you want them there for longevity and you have a child, you have to be able to say to them, this is not healthy. I cannot condone or support this. I need you to get back on track for the family. Don't go and ball your eyes out in the bathroom when somebody says that to you. They're looking out for you as well. However, for this guy to say he's gonna be out the door, there's a kid involved, come on, he sounded like a chauvinist pig. Okay, so now, again, could have been, could have been a valuable message in there, lost. Now let's do another example. I'm on track now, Tyler. Now we have a woman. Let's get to her. So tell us again what we even need men for. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm real confused. Still getting paid Whoa. Dream work Whoa. makes the dream work. Whoa. We need to sperm. We can just we can just like get a little syringe for that. Whoa. So um, well, I mean, okay. I mean, so now I'm you see that. So now, do you see what's happening? In the She's saying, "What do we need men for? We can just get a little sperm. We don't need you." Do you see what's happening in the space, the dating space? This is a manifestation. What you see happening on your screen with all these videos is, is what's happening at the club, is what's happening in the dating sphere, the real life one, not just the one where everyone's talking on television shows or podcasts. You have guys insulting women. Women feel disrespected. They're on defense. Then they insult men. That's ridiculous to say. You don't need fathers? Guys are just a sperm bank? That's a horrible thing to say. Horrible thing to say, obviously. Also a horrible thing to say, what the guy said before that, which is that if your woman gets a little chunk, she's out, you gotta leave. You're gonna leave her with a kid, it's done. So do you understand that the way you're talking about this stuff, this is why the whole dating sphere is dying. Cause it's like, you disrespect me, I'm on defense. Then you disrespect me, I'm on defense. Nobody trusts anybody, nobody wants to date me. I don't need you, you don't need me. What does that accomplish? If ultimately the goal is procreation in society and we all know that it is, otherwise you have no popular, there's nothing, right? We don't procreate, not, it's, bleh. What, where's this going, right? And it's just starting to sound like a lot of people who've been hurt. That's what it sounds like to me. I've been in a relation, I went through a couple of relationships in my life where I got hurt. And you know what happens when you get hurt? You come out and you're like, I'm done. <laughs> like, you're like, screw this, I'm never doing that again. I'm not falling in love, I can't. Like, uh-uh, stay away. It sounds like a lot of that. That's what, I don't know, is everybody like feeling injured? Why so defensive? Why so defensive? Sit down and listen to what somebody's saying, reason with them, be respectful. If you just brought a little bit of that into the manosphere, into the, let's call it the femisphere, I don't know what it's called, but just bring a little bit of that in 
and some of your arguments are valid. Maybe not this one about the sperm. Some of the arguments in here, you know, they, they make sense. Like, understand where a man's coming from. Women can't always understand where a man's coming from. Help me understand. Men can't always understand where a woman's coming from. Help me understand. Why's it got to be? I know we're in the age of sound bites and clicks and all that. I get it. But we also have a population to worry about, right? So I'm like concerned. I, am, I thank Jesus every day that I'm not in the dating sphere right now. This shit is crazy. It's well, crazy. And let's, let's be honest. The, in the case of this woman, she seems like a, an absolute nightmare. She's sure. mad because nobody wants to be with her. She's mad Maybe because she, had to she go to the sperm bank. sucks as a person. Maybe she had to go to the sperm bank and she's mad about that. I didn't watch the whole episode, but anybody who's saying that about some bad men, swimmers or something? Something. Not a lot of options. I don't know. Listen, I'm just saying that if you, if you have that attitude... It's just a reflection of you, right? If I sit down here and I go to in- interview someone and I'm all like, you're this and you're that and you don't know what you're talking about and you're dumb and you're, a, you're an idiot and I don't need you. I mean, you'd be like, wow, Jed's got some serious problems going on. Maybe, I don't know, some meditation. Can we suggest a yoga session or two? You know, think about it. I got more because I'm not done yet. This is an important discussion too, but let's just pause for a second. So you guys see what I'm saying before I proceed to this last one, which I think is an important message about good guys versus bad guys. Do you see what I'm saying? There's nuance that's missing. On the Valuetainment um, Instagram, I don't know who runs that uh, page, but they're, they're, somebody posted the exchange of Adam and I talking about money, me saying that I, you know, I, I don't prioritize money when I, when, I, when I dated, I didn't prioritize money. That wasn't, I was looking at character, ambition. I did mention ambition, remember all of this stuff. And everyone immediately, a lot of people came back and said, well, she didn't, she didn't marry any of those guys. Why didn't she marry them? Because they didn't have enough money. The assumption was that the guys in my past were insufficient financially. No, that's not what happened there. I didn't leave one guy in my life because of money. Honest to God truth. In fact, I did leave one guy, one rich guy. I dated one guy who had a lot of money early on and I was bored wasn't about his finances he was just boring to me we didn't have we didn't click and I remember that I left him and I wound up with a guy who didn't have a lot of money who I was crazy about was my first love and I remember thinking wow isn't that weird how that can happen that you could be with somebody and there's like not a lot of those comforts but there's something else that's comfortable so what I'm saying is a lot of people assume don't assume ask let's have that conversation let's have that also there's a difference between I wasn't saying oh I want a deadbeat I only, you know, my whole life is filled with deadbeat men who don't make any money and they make, you know, their, their whole aspiration is to make minimum wage. And that, no, I wasn't saying that. I was just saying ambition over how much money is in your pocket. Maybe somebody's starting a business and they don't have a lot of money right now, but they have plans. Maybe somebody's, maybe a guy's a teacher and a, a soccer coach, awesome person, great family man, brings a lot to the table. You know, they don't have a huge paycheck, but they've got a lot to offer as a person. Do you understand that by, tell, by telling guys that it's not all about money, I'm complimenting you. Do you get that? I'm saying there's more to you. When, when, in my view, there's more to a man than just how much money. Yeah, he's got money. Great. That'll make for great trips. And I'm not saying that money doesn't make life easier in many ways. I'm not saying that money doesn't remove challenges. What I'm saying is there's more to you. You know, men can have solid character. Men can be great listeners. Men can be a cool person to talk to. Men can be a shit ton of fun to hang out with. Men can be funny. Funny. Most of the comedians I love are guys. So I'm saying there's more to you. There's nuance in this conversation. I invite you to the gray, I call it. The gray. Where it's not all black and white. A lot of you took, oh, she doesn't care. Maybe a lot of you have money and you were like, is she taking a dig at me? Hell no. Hell no. You work your ass off. You make some cash. That's amazing. That's what I did. That's what my husband, my husband works. He's a hard worker. He's diligent. He's even part of this business now. I love ambition, but just, I invite you to the nuance. That's what a lot of these people are missing in this, in this space. They're missing the nuance. They're missing the, they're missing the people that don't fit in the boxes. They're missing what's not being said and instead getting insulted by what was said instead of asking, well, what do you really mean by that? So I'm going to bring that back, and we're going to have some cool guests coming. I'm going to announce them soon. We have some cool guests coming on that are sitting on here talking about this, a big-name guest, and we're going to get to the gray. This is an important one that I want to get to before we do a final story that I'm going to need Tyler to weigh in on. I'm going to. Good thing the two of you aren't mic back. I got two guys back here. They're going to, they should have been mic for this one. Guys need to weigh in on this one. All right. I want to do this one from Fresh and Fit. I think it's important 
Very, very important because I always talk about the good guys. Let's run it. Every single thing that I asked for and I needed, every little detail really? he picked up on. And that made me want him really bad. I was like, damn, That's like it. he pays attention. Did like he really pays attention to every little thing. Chris asked, did you smash? I didn't. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Not yet. But but he's. I Here's mean. Point. And I guarantee there's guys that didn't pay attention to anything you do, and they fucked. <sighs> so that's the point. Here's the thing. Like. Why would you you're, guarantee? You're, okay, we're good. Uh, because I. So I'm, he he caught her there. He asked. That's a great question, right? So let me say this. She's talking about this guy that she's calling a good guy. There is a difference between a good guy and a doormat. You want to be a good guy, guys. You don't want to be a doormat. You know this. If that guy's doing everything, if that guy's doing everything for her, oh, eh, she's saying every little thing I asked for, he was there. That shows he's got no life going on. What's he doing? Waking up, sitting by the phone, waiting to see what she needs. What does she want for breakfast? Does she need something for lunch? Does she need me to drive her somewhere? What is she? That's a doormat. That's a man that has no identity of his own. You don't want that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you want a good guy. By a good guy, I mean someone who's committed, someone who's faithful, someone who's honest, someone who has an identity of his own and is proud of that identity, somebody who's a good family man, someone who, who has a good relationship with, with the people, with good friends, who has good family members that, they, that you see him have exchanges with, where there's respect shown. That's what I'm saying as a good man. This is she's talking about a doormat. This guy's just sitting around waiting to see what he if he's sitting around waiting to see what he could do for you. By the way, he's probably not working too hard on anything. He's got a lot of spare time. That's a doormat. That's not going to be attractive. And no, you're not going to want to sleep with that guy. You're not. You're not going to want to sleep with that guy because it's not attractive in a man. It's not attractive in a man to be like that, to be like, what can I do for you 24 hours a day? Can I get you something? Oh my God, did I miss something? Did I burn your dinner? Is it too burnt? Is it too rare? Like Nobody wants that shit, okay? No, but know the difference, fresh and fit. You gotta know the difference. There's a doormat, it's a doormat, and then there's a good guy. Good guys get smashed plenty, plenty, but they're not doormats. They're not doormats, that's a big distinction. All right, I gotta get to the last topic of the day because it's too good. It's too good, I don't even know where the article is and I don't even care. Oh, here it is, okay. I know this is gonna be controversial, it shouldn't be, it will. I see this from the Wall Street Journal. Armpit hair is back, whether you like it or not. There's an image, Tyler. You got to scroll down to see that. I don't know if you're... Whether you like it or not. Right. It's back, bitches. It's the feminists. They're like, mm. okay, now, does this appeal to you? First of all, I'm going to take a poll. Tyler, you'll begin with you. Does this appeal to you? Abs absolutely not. Not. No. You would be like, if you saw a girl... Say you see a girl, right? And... Well, you have a girl, so this is not a good Tory, right? Okay. No, we're not trying to offend anybody. Let's say you were single and you saw, spotted a girl. You were single and you were like, oh, this is a nice girl. You start talking it up. Everything's going great. And then she lifts up her arm and you see that. Are you going to just be like, oh, I'll just find somebody else? You know? This well, And this isn't just it. So, so six years ago, maybe, I have a person I know. I don't want to throw him under the bus. I have a person I know who is very much on the left side of the political aisle. Ultra progressive AOC, Bernie Sanders. A female? Yes. Okay. And I was staying with this person. And we flew in to see her and she picks us up and she's wearing pants. And we go back to her house and she had a long sleeve I know where this on. is going, guys. And it's me and Tori. And we go back to her house and we're sitting on her couch hanging out and she goes to go change. <laughs> She comes out in shorts and she has black hair. Oh no. She walks through the door with leg hair and Tori goes <gasps> and audibly gasps. And she had leg hair and arm hair and armpit hair. And I said, I told you that because I, I knew I was like, I told you this was going to happen. And no, it's not a trick. Like, what, what are they going to do next? Grow a beard? I mean, I know they're already trying that, but. Well, you never know. Mustache. You know, I don't, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> the I'm mustache. Not, I'm just saying. I'm just, listen, I'm going to be trained. I lasered all that shit. I'm not into, but I didn't laser my arms. I don't have that much hair on my arms. But underarms, I was like, I'm done. I like a clean. And listen, you know, I understand now this movement. This is why people in the manosphere say you're trying to be like men. This is, it's very masculine. It is. I'm sorry. It's very, ma and people are going to say, oh, I'm so upset about this. It's masculine to be showing your underarm hair like that. 
It is to be having leg hair. That's not, it's not a feminine trait. It's not. And I am of the opinion, and I know this won't be popular to some in the modern feminist movement, but I am of the opinion that women should take pride in their appearance. And I like a groomed woman. I'm not saying that you got to listen. I go get my nails done every two weeks. I don't always put polish. Sometimes it's just about grooming. I get a facial and people say, oh, you're doing that for other people. I'm not. If you, if I, in fact, I'm not. Let's just say during COVID times when we were locked down, I was out in Staten Island at the time. I wasn't seeing anybody. I was in the house. That was the time when everybody let their hair go gray and mm -mm, I wasn't having that. You know what I had? I had people come to the house. I got a mani and a pedi. I had somebody come and cut my hair to the house. People who were willing during COVID times, people who weren't insane came. And I was about that maintenance because I like to look in the mirror and I like to see a woman that's put together. And I think that is a sign of self-respect as a female. Uh, you know, I'll tell you a story before I win. Before, with, with just a, a nod from the two guys in the back. Do you like this arm hair on women? No, I got two no's. And women will be like, oh, sure, guys can do it. Yeah, because men are different. Men are different from women. Why can't you just absorb that reality? Men and women are different. We're not supposed to be the same. We're not designed to be the same. If we were the same, we probably wouldn't be so drawn to each other a lot of the times. I'll never forget, I had a friend <clears throat> and he, uh, he was dating around New York and I was really excited at one point. It was, I was like, oh, he met somebody finally. It was not one to date well, let's just say that. Finally, he meets somebody. I'm like really excited to meet her. He brings her over to the house, okay? Summer. I look down, she's wearing sandals and I see what looked like man's feet. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It looked like man's feet. You know, listen, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Toenails all crooked, like just disarray going on. <laughs> Dis I can't even, I'm like, I can still see it. That's why I'm laughing. I can still see it. Disarray, like stuff that needed to be groomed that wasn't. And I said to him, I pulled him aside. This is not a joke. I pulled him aside and I said, I'm going to tell you something straight up. If her feet look like that, there's going to be other stuff you encounter that's not going to look good. You know what I'm getting at. I don't need to say it. I don't need to spell it out. Other stuff's going to be problematic. There might be some odors happening. I'm just saying, your feet as a female should not look like a man's feet. I'm not saying that man can't, men can't go for a pedicure every now and then and just file that shit up. And, you know, I'm, I'm not into the polish. I saw, I was, I was on Peloton the other day and Kendall says, oh, I'm into the polish for men. I don't want to see my man wearing nail polish. I don't. I do tell my husband every now and then for the calluses, you should go in and let somebody shave that shit down. Jeremy, you know what's up. There's no, I have nothing against that. But I, come on, women. Take some pride in your appearance. Take some pride in your appearance. I like a well-groomed woman. Doesn't always have to be about polish or this or that. Listen, I don't do the Botox. You see? I don't do the Botox. I'm not into artificial stuff. You know that. I'm very health and wellness. I don't do the Botox. I don't do the fillers. I don't do the lip fillers. I don't have a boob job. I don't have hair extensions. I don't do any of that. But I do take pride. You will see I look neat. I look clean. I get one of, I'm due for manicure. I just called the girl today. I'm like, I need to be, this is a sign of pride. And you know what? It will attract the opposite sex or it will attract, I can't even say the opposite sex anymore. It's like, but Jen, well, how do you know they want the opposite? It will attract. Let's just say it will attract. <clears throat> it will. Because people look at you and they're like, well, that's somebody who has their shit together. And you want it from a man too. You like a man that sometimes, you know, takes you out to dinner and looks, I shouldn't say that because I like men that look like they just rolled out from under cars. But you know what? Most people, let's just say most people. My men who just rolled out from under cars, this is the catch though. I want you showered too. Not gonna get into my bed with all that dirt on you. That's not gonna happen. I tell Jeremy all the time, I'm like, mm mm. I like the rough around the edges, sweat, fix stuff. You go into that shower before you get in my clean cup bed. And I'm just gonna say this I'm not, listen, I'm not gonna go here, Tyler. I'm not gonna go to a place that we all know could be gone to. But let's just say there's other areas of the body where hair can be in disarray. It's not always welcome. It's not always a sign of a clean kept woman. I'm just saying, I don't like all that stuff. That was my first thought was, wasn't that making a comeback like 10 years ago? Yeah. And you know, it's funny when I, I'm going to tell you this, my husband, my poor husband, you know, it's terrible to bring somebody in who doesn't have a mic. He can't defend himself. But he said to me, he said, you know what? You need to bring up the bush. That's what he said. I swear, Jeremy, I'm quoting you on air. He said, do it. I said, I don't know if people be receptive to that, but listen, I'm gonna just say ladies in general, be well-groomed. It's, it's, it's a sign of you got your shit together, okay? And guys notice, 
they notice in the same way, like if you don't comb your hair or if you're looking raggedy or if you got, if I came on here and had all chipped nails and I, it's just a sign that I just don't care about myself. I don't have any pride. Show some pride. Again, show respect for your, you gotta, you gotta like, like yourself. It's cliche. You gotta love yourself before somebody else. It's really true though. You gotta be comfortable in your own skin in order to, to, to navigate the dating nightmare that's going on right now. Because if you're comfortable in your own skin and you walk out and you meet a guy and he talks trash to you, you're just gonna be like, I'm good. But you'll actually feel that way. You won't be like, I'm good. And then you go home to your friend and you're like, he didn't talk to me enough. And he talked to another girl. And I don't know, like now I just feel like useless. I don't know, this always happens to me. You'll really feel like you don't give a shit. You're not gonna be talking about that guy when you walk in. When you feel good and confident, there's an energy that exudes off you that guys feel. And they're like, wow, that's somebody that's interesting. Hmm. Confident, empowered men will be drawn to that energy of like, she's got her shit together. I'm telling you, I am telling you. And people say, oh, you know, men want a submissive. That's different. Again, that's nuance. Yes, a lot of men like someone who walks into the bedroom and lets a man be a man. Yes, that's different. They also like a woman who gets their nails done and takes some pride in their appearance and says, you know what, I got my shit together. They don't want to see you in sandals and see a pair of feet that looks like their feet. Guys, you don't. You don't want to see some busted up toenails on your woman. You got to be honest about this stuff. You got to be honest about this stuff. It's different. Men can, listen, men get away with being a little more raggedy. It's something, there's something sexy about it to a lot. I'm going to say it. It's just different. There's something sexy about a man that's kind of like rugged and a little dirty and greased up. We know it. It's different. Men and women are different. That's not, in a woman, you're like, hmm, what's going on over there? Does she got, still like, she stinks, you know? <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's just different. Embrace the differences. Womanhood can be so amazing and powerful and like, I don't know, I love being female. I do but you gotta like really like own it, you know? Just saying, don't like, I don't wanna see your, listen, if you come here as a guest, you come here as a guest and you go like this and I see a whole bush going on, I'm gonna have to say something. I'm just saying, I, I can't let it go. Tyler, you'll be here for that moment to share it, hopefully. I See, I I get what you're saying about upkept and all that and to, you know, I get all that, like I, but I don't even take it that far. It's like, it don't smell bad, fine. But I don't, I feel bad for the poor guy who goes to sleep with this woman yeah. and she takes her shirt off and she, it's like, ugh, you gotta warn, first of all, you gotta warn somebody about You do. That. Second of all, it's, I don't, I don't wanna see hair. Hair is different, right? It is different. And I wonder, is that because, do you think as a man, because you view that as like, that's masculine? Yes, or it's you, okay. a very masculine trait. Right. Very masculine trait. And you know, people have a problem with that, but it's like, if he, you know, if you're, if you're a straight up heterosexual guy, you're attracted to women. You're attracted to women. You're attracted to the femininity that comes with that. You're attracted to all of those things. Like guys always say, women just, they just smell better. It's not perfume. It's just like, there's something that comes off of us that just like our pheromones, whatever it is, it just, we're different, right? Maybe it's the hormone combination, whatever it is. You are entitled as a heterosexual man to voice that you are attracted to someone who is feminine in appearance, right? And it doesn't have to be fake. It doesn't have to be, you know, women now think of that as like, oh, I need to look like a Barbie doll. No, you don't. You just need to be put together. You know, you need to take pride in your appearance and you need to not have underarm hair or hair growing on your legs that's six feet long. Like it's one thing if you're on Survivor, but short of that, I'm not gonna lie. If I did Survivor, I would laser that shit first. You think the people on Naked and Afraid leave armpit hair? The women? I mean, listen, it, it probably grows in. I know when I used to shave, it grows back. That's why I got the laser. I was like, I wanna be like nice and clean, like a hairless cat. So, I'm serious, I did my legs, and I understand, listen, it's expensive to do that. It's not everybody's gonna be able to do that. I did that at a, at a different time, first of all, um, but not everybody's gonna be able to go that route. But you know, you could buy a razor at CBS for you know pretty, pretty cheap. You could do something about it. Do something about it, wax, there's options, thread, something. I can't be looking like it's Neanderthal shit going on. I just, I can't, I can't. I can't do it, not with, I just cannot. When I looked, I'm telling you guys, listen, this is the test. Guys, I'm talking to you before we close out today because this was a long show. Do me a favor. You go on a date, you go on a date, you look down at those toenails. You look down at the toenails. I'm telling you, if you see chip nails, and I don't mean like one little chip, you know, you could tell the difference. I mean, you see all stuff that looks like it hasn't been tended to in months. You see hair grown on toes that looks like a cluster. You see some skin and, and feet that, this is the best. The feet that are dirty on the bottom, they wear the sandals and they flip, 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 flip. The feet come up and the bottom's black. 
Now you know her apartment floor is dirty. She didn't do nothing to clean that floor. I'm telling you, listen, just pay attention. Pay attention. I always give like girls the lessons. Girls, when it comes to guys, pay attention to the character, how they treat you. Are they always in their phone when they're talking to you? It's a little bit different, the, the advice I give. But listen, you are entitled as a heterosexual male to be attracted to what is feminine in a woman and to, and to not be attracted to what looks like underarm hair. I'm sorry. I know it's not trendy in 2022. I'm not trying to be 2022. I'm trying to be real. And everybody out there listening knows there's some truth to what I'm saying. Unless you're like the feminist, like I probably somebody in the chat screaming like, no, 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 she wants to take us back. She doesn't want women to have the right to vote. No, honey, I just want you to shave that bush under your arm. That's all I'm saying. Simple message. Any close out from the chat? Um, or anything you want to share as a close out, Tyler? I know you put you on the spot. No, this, I, this is a, not very often I cite Adam Sosnick, but there's a great <laughs> stat he has. This is from CNN. Um, by 2030, 45% of working women aged 25 to 44 in the U.S. will be single. 45% mm -hmm. of, of working women by 2030, 25 to 44 will be single. That's a huge number of women. We're gonna talk about that. And this shit doesn't help. We're gonna talk about that. We have a very special, I'm not ready to announce it. And there's a rule, in t I come from network TV and cable news TV. There's a, there's a rule about that. You don't announce the guests until like the day before because you never know. Schedules change and everybody gets all excited and then stuff doesn't happen. But we are planning to talk about stats like that with a very, very special guest that we'll have here next Wednesday. And it's an important stat. And I know, oh, female power, all this. But the question is, are women going to be happy? Are they going to be happy if that stat materializes and they are alone? Are men gonna be happy if they wind up alone? Are women and men going to be happy if they continue to talk over each other in the dating space, not feel heard, disrespect each other, have a great sound bite, but wind up lonely and 50? That is the question. Think about it. Again, subscribe to the channel. If you liked what you saw, please hit a like button. We will be back here on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks for being here today.